When we listen to music, we often hear two types of noises. One is a tone. And another is called noise. What's the difference between the two? Well, a tone often has repeating characteristics. In noise, it gets a little bit chaotic. You can even see when the snare drum starts to actually activate because of how chaotic it gets. Now that we know what kinds of sounds exist, we're going to be taking apart one of the top gaming consoles from the 2000s, the Game Boy Advance. And we're going to explore what kind of sound hardware is in there to generate these sounds. So let's go ahead and dissect this thing. So first you'll notice on the back, we have these tri-point, tri-wing screws. And those we need a special tool which today I'm going to be using the iFixit Mako 64-bit. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because this tool right here actually has 64 bits in it that can be used to take apart a bunch of different electronics. I really like it, it was 30 bucks. I got it at Best Buy, so I'll leave a link down below if you guys wanna check it out. But this kit has the, the special tri-point Y1 bit which we need to open the Game Boy Advance. So let's go ahead and get started. We want to take out the batteries, just like that. All right, so that is all the tri-point screws. Want to make sure we don't forget about this little screw right here. Alrighty, so now we can go ahead and lift this off gently. Now these buttons will just slide out here. All right, so we got all of those buttons removed. So now this is the most delicate part. You see this little ribbon cable here that will connect the motherboard to this display. So you wanna make sure that this stays intact. So you have to be very gentle with it. Also, the thing that just fell out was the power switch. That's all right. Now we just have this little switch here. The key thing, you don't wanna just try and rip it off. If it's not coming off, usually that means there's something else. So we still have to unscrew these two silver screws. And you wanna pay attention where the screws are. So now we have officially gotten all of these screws off. You can just gently lift that back and just set it down like that. And voila! When it comes to generating sound on the Game Boy Advance, the chip we are most concerned with is this one right here. Now, if you know what a CPU is, it is the central processing unit of a computer, basically the brains of everything. And this is kind of misleading that this says CPU because we might think, oh, this is just the CPU of the Game Boy Advance. Everything else, all the sound chips must be around here somewhere, right? Well, actually, this is what's known as a system on chip. So it contains all kinds of different components, one of which is the sound generator that actually goes directly to the speakers. Now, the sound generator actually contains two parts. One is a programmable sound generator, which was used on the original Game Boy, and the other is a two channel digital to analog converter, which allows us to play audio files. Now don't get too hyped because these are not your standard 16-bit audio files, but they are rather 8-bit audio files, a little bit low quality, but it still allows us to create lots of different sounds than the original programmable sound generator. Now let's talk about the programmable sound generator in more detail. This chip is similar to the AY38910 and also the Rico 2A03 used in the Nintendo Entertainment System. However, it's not exactly like it and Nintendo does not release what kind of chip it is. So it's just kind of a custom made chip, but it's based on the architecture of these different devices. If you look this kind of music up, there's a bunch of different songs from chiptune composers who use these chips, and it's very nostalgic. I love listening to these. But as far as the Game Boy Advance, it contains the same programmable sound chip as the original Game Boy. So this sound chip allows us to program four channels. So when we are programming these channels, we are actually writing values to the sound hardware that get sent out as voltages 
to the speaker right here to create all kinds of different sounds. The first channel is a tone generator, so like we talked about tones, and it includes a sweep function. Whoop. So that will allow us to create all kinds of cool jumping sounds and spaceship sounds. The second channel is a, another tone generator that is pretty much the same as the first tone generator. It just does not include the sweep function. And the third channel is a wavetable. So those of you out there who use Serum or a bunch of producers and you know what wavetables are, that's awesome. If you don't, they basically allow us to create a bunch of different waveforms. But don't get too hyped up because the Game Boy Advance wavetable is actually a 4-bit sample wavetable. So it is not very high quality. It's not going to allow us to create as many timbres, but it is going to give us some more expression, some more instruments that we can use. And it is often used as the bass instrument. And finally, we have the fourth channel, which is the noise channel. That allows us to create all sorts of different sounds, such as hi-hats, snares, and some low rumbles, which are pretty cool. Now this right here, this is the RAM, so that just gives us some extra storage. There also is internal RAM inside of this system on chip, which is usually where the sound is stored. And finally, on the back, we have the amplifier chip right next to that round circular knob that allows us to increase the volume of our game Although it does not go up very loud, which is disappointing, there are mods out there which allow you to get a different amplifier and blast it. But you can also just use a audio interface, which is what I use to produce music. And that's about it for the Game Boy insides. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace!